Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look back at a test I did on a 4.8 liter where we made 476 horsepower. That's right, we just missed making 100 horsepower per liter out of our 4.8 liter, but here's the question for today. How do we take that 476 horsepower number and make it 500 or even maybe a little bit more than that. That's right. We want to make 500 horsepower from a stock bottom men 4.8 liter from the wrecking yard. I'm going to go over the list of modifications I think will work. You let me know if those are right. And also, what did I forget? Let's check Today, I want to talk about 4.8 liter, more specific, <coughs> excuse me, more specifically a 4.8 liter where we want to make a lot of NA power with it. So we, we've done that recently on a 5.3 liter. We made 542 horsepower with a 5.3 liter. And this is with us. The important thing of this is that, that it's, it is with a stock bottom end. It's not a dedicated like high compression dome piston dry sump kind of thing. What we're trying to find out is can we make a lots of power with just a junkyard short block, basically. And we start out with a junkyard motor, but can we do it with a junkyard short block? And so we want to do that now with a 4.8 liter. And looking back, I've tested lots and lots of 4.8 liters. And I've only ever done one where we've done a fairly big change in terms of the NA power output. We've put lots of cams in them and springs and turbos and all, all of that stuff. But the 4.8 liter that I made the most power with so far is we put a set of ported 706 heads on it from the guys at Total Engine Airflow. We put a, not even a very big cam in it. It was a Crane 224 cam. So it was 590 lift, 224, 232 of 50, and I think 113. So 224 cam is, while being fairly good size on a 4.8 liter, it's nowhere near what fits and, and nowhere near what we could put in there to, to make even more power. We're going to talk about what we need to do to make even more power. So a camshaft would probably be on the list. Also a fast intake manifold. I think we use an LSXRT on that. Same thing as an LSXR in terms of power output. We had inch and three quarter headers on that combination. And that motor made, it did well. It made right at or almost... 100 horsepower per liter. It made 476 horsepower at 7,000 and 391.5 foot-pounds of torque at 50, at exactly the same, 391.5 foot-pounds of torque at 58 and 5,900 RPM. So it had, you know, two RPMs where it was exactly the same. You know, it's pretty close on either side of that also because, you don't. Know, it's not a big split there. So you're talking about one foot-pound or something. So right, right in there is where it made peak torque. And it did very well. One of the things I think happened on this one and looking at the curve, we had such a dramatic drop in power in the last 100 RPM going from, let's see, from 7,200 to 7,300, it dropped down like 10 horsepower, which is a lot. Now, now we expect a fall off, but after you go past the, the horsepower peak, but not like that. What I'm thinking of is, and I'm not exactly sure, right? it's been so long since we ran that, I don't remember, and it doesn't show in the notes, what springs we had on it. I think that we had Comp 2619 Beehive springs on it. So I'm thinking that this is the beginning of valve float there. Now, it was a little past the power peak anyway, so I don't think we're going to pick something up. But we would need to rev this motor higher to make more power, <coughs> just as we did with the 5.3. So we're getting looking at basically a peak number you're going to want more RPM to play with. And that way we could, you know, we could get away with more camshaft. So we had, a, we had good, good heads that will support way more power than this. They'll support another hundred horsepower above this. We had a 224 cam, which is not terribly big. We had a fast intake manifold, which I would think in 7,000 or less RPM, that's probably the best manifold that we could put on there. I don't know of another one that's going to make that kind of power. So the question becomes, what can we do if we wanted to get to what do we need? Another 24 horsepower to get to, we'd like to get to the 500 horsepower mark. You know, nice. <coughs> and it's got a nice, it's a nice goal. So you guys let me know what you think, what, what we should do on this. Uh, let me know what things you think are going to help, what things would, would make more power, but I'm going to go over a list of things that I have and to see if they're the same kinds of things that you have. 
and then we'll have a poll. So let's see here. About we'll start from the bottom. So when we ran this motor, when we made 476 horsepower with this 4.8 liter, we ran it with a truck, uh, a, a truck oil pan. And that's not ideal. It, it's it's what the motor came with because that was originally a truck motor and that's what we had and that's what we ran it with. We didn't pay too much attention to it. It already has a windage tray, which is definitely beneficial. But two things that I think that would help this motor. One is a better oil pan, something maybe with a kick out. Maybe that's not going to be as big of a deal um, with the way that the block is structured. But uh, a better pan possibly, and then maybe a crank scraper uh, integrated into the windage tray, you know, maybe a better kind of windage tray. Again, we're picking nits there <laughs> on a better kind of windage tray other than the windage tray that's already there, but getting the oil down away from the oiling setup, uh, you know, maybe we could work on drainage, not going back down onto the, onto the crankshaft. Anything that we could do to get the oil away from the crank is that's extra power. And especially if you're creating windage, that's that's problematic. So I think that there's possibly some stuff there in the oiling system. I wouldn't look for huge gains there on a stationary engine dyno where we're not moving around and sloshing and stuff. That's usually not as much of an issue, but I would look there just to see. And the, and the other thing that goes along with that is obviously we would try, you know, lightweight oil, some 020s or something like that to, to get... Um, to minimize the drag on the, on the, on the oil pump. So we would, we could do that. The other thing that I would think about now, the rule for this for me internally <laughs> is that I have to keep it a stock bottom end. So get a wrecking yard motor. It's gotta be a stock bottom end. We can change things around, but we want to keep the stock crank rods and pistons in there. So the flat, the four eight already has a flat top piston. What I would do looking at the short block is I would make sure that the piston is at zero deck or maybe even slightly out just a little bit. If it's if it's below the deck, then I would deck the block and, and at least get it to zero. So we would do that. But I would use the stock pistons and block and rods and, and crank. But one thing we could do is we could look at some low tension rings for this. So I was going to take it apart and, you know, it is a wrecking yard motor, but we're retaining all that stock stuff. But one thing that I would be okay <laughs> with changing. I don't want to change the piston like to a dome piston or that kind of thing. But a, a ring upgrade would not be <laughs> would not be a terrible thing. So possibly a ring upgrade. Maybe maybe this might be a good application for a zero gap ring um, or at least a low tension style ring, maybe with ring spacers and stuff. And to to try to gain some power from you know dropping the ring tension. So that that there's potential there. The other thing is cylinder heads. Now the or, or if we go up, let's let's go up. So we'll we'll talk about camshaft. The camshaft that we would put in there, that 224 cam, that crane cam has always worked well. It's not the most powerful cam that you could put in there. The thing that we have to balance though is I know that all of the David Visor guys are gonna go, yeah, now we can now we can tighten up the LSA. Yeah, that's possible. But what we need to do still is we need to balance the available piston valve clearance. In this instance, I don't care about idle quality. So, you know, let's tighten that up and get, and I'm, I, and I honestly, I'm not that concerned about average power either. So if we're just concerned about a peak number and not average power production, I don't know that I would go whole hog on tightening the LSA and the valve events are associated with that. It would be interesting to try different camshafts with this thing because we're talking about making peak power at like 7,500 to 8,000 probably on this combination is probably where this motor is going to want to run, particularly when we talk about what we're what we want to do to the cylinder heads and intake manifold. But on the camshaft side, I would like to try a couple of cams. I would like to try, you know, maybe something that has a 107, 108, 106 LSA on it, but something that has more duration. So I would want something that would be like a, a maybe a BTR hot rod cam or even the cam that I'm running in the 5.3. We could try that in the 4.8. We could try the, the stage four LS3 camshaft because it's made good power. We know that it does that. We know that it does it on a, a 5.3. I just would want to try it on a 4.8. I kind of think that we're going to want to go a little bit smaller than that camshaft on the 4.8. 
but who knows? I, it would be, it would all be worth trying. So, just, so a different cam profile other than the two twenty four cam shaft that we, we we have at least another, you know, six, seven, eight degrees of cam shaft of, of intake duration before we start running into clearance problems. You know, less if we start tightening the lobe separation angle up, but we would definitely want to play with the valve events on this thing to get it to make more power. The working in conjunction with that camshaft would be lifters. On this combination, I probably would want to try short travel lifters or, or, or a long push rod to compress the, the, the standard travel lifters just so that we could get more precise on the cam timing and make sure that the lifter is acting not like hydraulic roller, particularly at high RPM, that's acting more like a solid roller and we get rid of some of the aerated oil. Again, we're we're looking at areas where some of these things are big gains, like the camshaft, I think is going to be a big gain. The intake manifold is going to be a big gain. Things like lifter stuff might be nothing. It might be a little bit. So that's another one of those things. <clears throat> On the cylinder heads, I, I would be looking at, we use ported Total Engineer Flow 706 heads, which I think are really good and a really good choice and can support, based on their flow level, can support a lot more power than we were making. We weren't taking full advantage of it, but I think that there might be other heads that we would consider. A 205 trick flow head, the even the 220 trick flow heads that I have on the 5.3 that have been then ported by Brian Tooley Racing. The other thing that I would do is we would try to adjust the compression like we did on the 5.3 by milling those heads. The heads have already been milled, so they're, they're already been cut 30. And then also put a 41 gasket on it so that we could put, we could get as much static compression as we can, which we know is beneficial for power. But again, we've got to juggle that with camshaft. So if we go with a camshaft that is minimal piston to valve clearance, and then we start putting the valve closer to the piston, with a small, with a thin head gasket, and also by milling the head, we we reduce piston to valve clearance. So all of that we have to be mindful of all of that stuff. The other thing on the heads that this thing had, like I said, I think it had twenty six nine eighteen beehive springs, which are not ideal. We would want a good dual spring like we have on those trick flow heads for the five three, so that you know we and and we would want a good camshaft that has valve train stability at RPM, like that LS3, that, like that stage four camera that we have. So we don't have to worry about the thing being unstable, but we also do need enough spring pressure. And I would just use the factory rockers again, that style rocker, maybe a, maybe a butched one if these are old or whatever, but that, that style rocker, I wouldn't probably go to a roller rocker, although we could try that and see. I have tried roller rockers in the past. We tried them on the 383 and we did pick up power going to the roller rocker from the standard rocker. So it might be something to look at. The next thing that we would look at would be headers. We ran an inch and three quarter QTP header on there. There's no evidence that, that suggests that that's the ultimate header for making power. I would at least want to try a couple of the other inch and seven eighths headers that we have to, to see if maybe more peak power was available. And then we would also play with collector length extensions. And, and we usually don't get big changes in peak power from stuff like that. Usually there's more change in power down low from collector length extensions, but it's something that we could play with and we could adjust. Naturally, we, on the whatever intake manifold that we picked and we, we would talk about this, the fast intake manifold works really well in the RPM range that we ran the 4.8 before because it made peak power at 7,000. So you're just not going to get something that makes better average power than that. The shorter runner manifolds are a poly high ram, the BTR Trinity manifold that we use like on the 5.3, short runner manifolds like that that, are, that enhance power at higher engine speeds would definitely be something that I would consider and something that I would want to try. The other thing is maybe a, an IR manifold or, or, or some kind of cool cross ram like the guys at um, Performance Designs have some cool cross rams for stuff like that. The hull or the fast... LSX HR intake manifold, which is like the the carbon PTR manifold that the guys from performance uh, performance designs have. So the carbon PTR stuff, that kind of manifold at higher RPM, yeah, it's going to be softer down low, particularly on a 4.8. But if if we're above 7,000 in the 7,500, especially 7,500 to 8,000 range, 
one of those manifold styles is going to make more power than certainly than a fast. And so it's going to be better there. So we could pick up some power uh, in that RPM range. Again, if we're just looking for peak, that's important. Obviously a big throttle body on there, 102 or 105 with a big radius entry on that. You know, I, if we're at 500 horsepower on this thing, I don't know that a radius entry on the throttle body that flows enough to support six or 700 horsepower is going to be worth anything at that power and flow level, but it, we know it's not going to hurt anything. And so that sort of thing can be beneficial. The other thing that I would do, and I've done this in the past before when looking for power, if you're just doing a G-Wiz number, is a light flywheel and drive plate. We know that that's worth power. So we could do that. Um, we talked about push rods and lifters. Now, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what you think about port matching. So should we go to the trouble of whatever manifold that we put on there? And this is actually easier on some of these short runner manifolds with some kind of removable lid. If you could look in there and go, oh, look, you know, maybe, and we've seen this in the past with some cast manifolds where the port alignment is like, you know, shifted, it's, it's offset. So if you get one that's like this, you know, it's kind of moved over a little bit. So you get some ports that, you know, one edge of the port on the sidewall is going to overhang a little bit. So what do you guys think? So if we went in there, laid it on there, even pinned it, got it in the right spot, said, okay, this is where it's going to be. You go in, what we do is bend a piece of welding rod and put a tip on it, go in, scratch the underside of the manifold. And then you do a little grinding with a, with your little porting tools and just match that edge so that, you know, everything is flowing the way that it's supposed to. So the, so that's a nice smooth transition at least. And, and you, you know, you have, <laughs> there's no gasket there, but we gasket match the heads. And so you try to minimize or completely eliminate any sort of turbulence that might be there from an, from either an overhang in one direction where you're kind of hitting the edge of a wall um, or to an overhang in the other direction where you might be inducing, you know, vortices or, or, or flow disturbances of some kind. So you want to get rid of that. We talked about the, you know, the thinner head gaskets and stuff along with that and mating those together, getting higher compression and all that. And, and, and a lot of that stuff is important. So let me know, do you think that we missed anything? Now we could do this also with fuel. So we could try E85 or methanol or you know, if you wanted to really make the power, you just put nitromethane in it and you could definitely do it with that. I didn't want to go to that extreme. But the other fuels would definitely be possible. Sir, the E85 is always a given just because I can just go get that at the local gas station right around the corner from West Tech. So that's an easy deal. And, and I, I don't know that we're at a high enough compression on this NA motor with a, you know, with a stock bottom end and, and just milling the head a little bit. We're, we're only going to be probably around 10 to 1 or something. I don't know that that's high enough compression to really take advantage of, especially at the power peak of something like E85, may, maybe methanol. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to try it and see. You know, it's there. It's easy to swap out and it's a, it's a simple test to try. So it, it might be worth it. And if you're looking for things like that, you got to try different things. And th that would be one of them that we would definitely try. And so we would try all that. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think that, that, those modifications would get us. Do you think, what do you guys think? Do you think if we did those things, employed those things, that we could get this thing, a stock bottom end 4.8 to get to 500 horsepower? You know, we 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 probably, it should be fairly easy to get enough cylinder head flow, enough intake flow for the intake manifold to be in the right RPM range where the thing should make power with and, and, and put more camshaft in it than we had before. I, I really don't see any reason why that's not possible. And so let me know what you guys think and we can uh, we can discuss accordingly. Okay, guys, there you have it. 476 horsepower from the 4.8 liter and all the things that I think might work to get us to 500. Let me know what I forgot. Let me know which one of the things will work. Our mature older, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And I'll keep testing.